When I was two years old, I was exposed to my favorite superhero and character in all of fiction, Spider-Man. Marvel's iconic character has had an incredible impact on my life, and when I was little, all I wanted was to be able to be Spider-Man. Many years later, I can finally say I feel like I have swung through the streets of New York at breakneck speeds to save the day as the web slinger thanks to Marvel Spider-Man. The feelings this open world superhero simulator achieved are unparalleled in any game available today and are something only Insomniac Games, Marvel, and Sony could have created together. Emotion is the core of Marvel's Spider-Man, whether it's elicited from jumping off the Avengers Tower and swan diving until you're mere inches from the pavement only to shoot a web and begin narrowly propelling yourself through the bustling street or through something incredibly gripping in the story like an emotionally charged battle with the villain or a heart-wrenching moment for Peter Parker. A Spider-Man game should make you feel something, because if you want to portray him accurately, that's probably the most important thing. Literally from the very first minute, Insomniac cements their passion and understanding of the wall crawler, and it was clear they knew even the most intricate and subtle elements of the character. In Marvel's Spider-Man, we meet Peter Parker eight years into his crime-fighting career. The game opens with you locking up Kingpin in a bombastic set-piece that sets the stage for what's to come. With Kingpin and a number of Spidey's other recognizable baddies behind bars, things are peaceful. That is, of course, until a new gang known as the Inner Demons rise up to begin their dominance over New York, which quickly unravels into something bigger than anything Spidey has ever faced. Insomniac ditches the origin story and instead focuses on a completely original one, and while Peter Parker is the same quippy nerd you know and love, other characters have undergone a bit of a change. Take Mary Jane Watson, for example. While still being the primary love interest for Peter Parker, Insomniac has infused a bit of Gwen Stacy into her, giving her a sense of resilience and independence, and doesn't simply serve as Peter Parker's cute girl next door. Their chemistry is wonderful, even when they're bickering, and a lot of the moments between Peter and MJ are highlights of the game. Leading up to launch, Insomniac was very vocal about wanting to create a game that isn't just a Spider-Man story, but one that shows the collision of Spider-Man and Peter Parker's worlds. We've seen this demonstrated very well in the movies, shows, and comics, but the games have rarely ever pulled it off. Until now. Thanks to a healthy blend of down-to-earth moments between Peter and characters like Aunt May, MJ, and Miles Morales, along with adrenaline-fueled Spidey action, we see the two sides of the mask. Even when he's wearing the mask, there's a subtle distinction whether Peter or the Spider-Man persona is the one doing the talking. That distinction begins to almost mold into one entity as you get deeper into the game, really blurring the lines of the dual identities. As the stakes rise, Peter begins to take things more seriously and invest himself more into the battle ranging in New York, allowing his more delicate emotions to channel through him. It's a crucial element to the crux of the story Insomniac wants to tell, and it's handled brilliantly. What is probably an equally strong theme in the story is this element of idols and heroes falling from grace, the corruption of men with good intentions. In past Spider-Man games, villains have always felt like just the bad guys with an evil plan. There has never really been a great Spider-Man game where it was rooted with personal stakes, but somehow Insomniac pulled this off as well. It's much more intimate here for a number of reasons. Martin Lee, aka Mr. Negative, is the primary antagonist of the game, but he's just not generic evil guy number one in a roster of supervillains. He has a personal connection to Peter. He's a good man deep down, but struggles with his evil alter ego. With Peter Parker being the optimist that he is, he seeks to reason with Lee instead of just webbing him up and sending him on his way. This theme extends into other characters you meet along the way, and it grows stronger throughout, giving it the emotional weight it needs to set itself apart from anything we've seen before in a Spidey game. This is also a darker story than I initially anticipated. It's not super edgy and depressing, but there are moments where the game really makes you sit there and feel almost appalled by what's going on. There's one incredibly lengthy sequence where my jaw was flung open for an extended period of time simply out of pure awe of where Insomniac was taking it. While there are plenty of moments of levity, the game doesn't pull its punches either. It hits incredibly hard when it wants to. Speaking of punches, Spider-Man himself is no punch puller either. The combat in this game is fast, fluid, and when you're really in the thick of it, with everything working flawlessly, it's incredibly fun. Unlike in the Batman Arkham games, you're not just punching and countering. All those gadgets you've spent upgrading, they're easily accessible and they feel much more purposeful in combat. 
With the ability to bring up a gadget wheel at any time and slow down time a bit to switch between various webbing types and other tools, you're able to make fights feel much more engaging. Use your web shooters to type a foe and beat them into submission, shoot an impact web at a thug and send them flying into a wall where they become stuck, stick a web mine in between a pair of evildoers and smash them into each other. It's all about creativity and acting on the fly. The more you play and the more you experiment, the better the combat becomes. Surprisingly, even the most basic brawls aren't simple or easy. While difficulty isn't one of the game's hurdles, certain parts can be pretty challenging, and that's why you're heavily encouraged to upgrade and use your abilities than just mash the counter button over and over again. Sometimes fighting can feel a bit clunky due to Spidey's agility and speed. It's not frustrating or awful, but it can break that immersive flow of combat when he bounces too far away or isn't doing exactly what you expected him to do in your head. It's a small flaw in an otherwise masterful combat system though. The game also encourages a stealth approach before things really kick off, and it does a pretty good job at offering a slew of stealth takedowns, whether it's from overhead rafters or light posts to web up enemies, or simply sneaking up behind an enemy to knock them out. Some stealth sections in the game have you playing as MJ, and this is probably the least enjoyable aspect of the game. It's not dreadful by any means, but it grinds the game to a halt when it feels very rapid otherwise. You'll be forced to crouch through areas, wait for enemies to walk away from you while hiding behind boxes, and create distractions to progress. These moments are done sparingly enough that it doesn't hurt the game's pacing very much at all, and as you get towards the end of the game, these sequences actually become much stronger. One of the most exposition-heavy parts of the story comes during one of MJ's levels, and is done in such a smart way that it became an instant standout for me. However, when you're not stealthing around or putting carjackers in silk cocoons, chances are you're doing what Spider-Man does best traversing New York City, and there's really nothing like moving around this fully realized world. Webs attach to actual surfaces as opposed to just floating in the sky. You can press L2 and R2 to launch yourself towards key points like flagpoles or ledges and instantly bounce off them to keep your momentum. You can wall run and use your speed to kickstart a fast web swing and so much more. It's honestly hard to put into words how good it all feels. Insomniac just nails it. You'll see iconic locations like Doctor Strange's Sanctum Sanctorum and Avengers Tower, have the ability to interact with civilians, and hear frequent updates from J. Jonah Jameson's hilarious Alex Jones-esque podcast, Just the Facts. Seriously, it's worth listening to, and it includes one of several references to the Balloon Kid from the Spider-Man 2 video game. The world feels alive, it's like you're a part of it as opposed to just being a vessel or background for the story. People shout things at you, be it good or bad, there's an in-game version of Twitter which is actively being filled with posts about the master vigilante, the events of the story, and the impact it has on the city, and other random but wonderful nonsense. With an emotionally rich story, gameplay that fulfills childlike dreams of being a superhero, and an engaging world with no shortage of puddles, Marvel's Spider-Man is not only the definitive Spider-Man game, but one of the best games of the generation. There was a lot of talk before this game released about how this would be Spider-Man's Arkham game, but it's not. It's much more than that. It takes risks, going beyond pre-established notions for the IP to give welcome surprises and changes, as well as lay new ground for the character. Insomniac's not playing the greatest hits of Spider-Man, they're making a new era of the webhead that will go down as a groundbreaking age in superhero gaming.